Congrats on Here Out West being the opening night for the Sim Sydney Film Festival, and now it's releasing in cinemas on 3rd of Feb. How was the reaction of the audience on the opening night? I can take that one. Um, yeah, opening night reaction was overwhelming, I think I would say. Um, you know, we had a packed crowd at the State Theatre. Um, obviously, it's been a really tough year for the film industry, tough two couple of years for the film industry, things being shut down, events not happening. So the fact that we could have the Sydney Film Festival happen, which was firstly amazing. Secondly, we opening we opened the film festival, which was also amazing. Um, and I think people in there just didn't know what to expect, you know. And I think there was as a big crowd, they might have I don't know what they thought they were going to watch, but I think once once the movie sort of started and and they sort of tapped into it, um, I could feel the goosebumps in the room, you know. I could feel that you know people were really invested into the in the story and you know because it's quite an emotional journey and it's a drama so I think it really took people on a bit of a ride and yeah we got thunderous applause in the end and and it was a really lovely environment overall I think it was such a special night yeah I think for me I was I was struck by the emotional response and people coming up personally and saying you know it really um, was a heart opener for them they didn't use those words but yeah they were clearly impacted by it but one of the things that I was a bit jealous that I wasn't able to be at were the screenings in Western Sydney um, mm -hmm. where it was actually to audiences who are seeing their themselves on screen and I think that would have been amazing. Thank you. Herod West is also a highly relevant and reflective of today's time. So how would you describe this film from an Indian angle? Leah, you want to go? How about from an Indian angle? I think it's, it's groundbreaking in the sense that we've got a story that's set in Australia, the Indian chapter, for instance, that I'm part of. Um, the, and it's written by Bina Bhattacharya. So from an Indian perspective, just seeing your story written by an, uh, as someone who is of that culture and and it's so authentic and so I think from that point of view we can um, celebrate and I think and Bina I remember saying she said she said that she wanted to valorize Bengali culture and tradition and I think she really does do that in this chapter the eternal yeah, world is called. I think so too and and just just to add on like I think <clears throat> you know it's the first time um I I personally as an actor spoke my language in a film and you know speaking Bengali um in the in the in the film is it was so special for me I, I couldn't sort of I I never I never thought it it had happened like this <laughs> um and especially in a film that I was a part of in terms of creating it and and you know being in the writer's room and writing it so from that perspective I think uh, Indian audiences or South Asian audiences can go and expect something that's truly authentic and that's truly, you know, I think it's groundbreaking for, for, for us uh, because uh, we are represented in this film in many different ways and in many different facets, you know, as writers and in, in, the, in the roles that we, Leah and I play, um, and there's another role, another couple of roles as well. Um, it, it's just all multidimensional and I think that's really special because I think in a lot of projects, it's like there's always like one Indian character and somebody else has written in that character and, you know, just shove them into the story or sometimes it's not fully fleshed out. But I think this film is quite the opposite. Just, so you've actually just answered my next question because, you know, as the writer and the actor of Brotherhood, this film is reflective of your upbringing in Western Sydney. Can you say that? Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, Bro well, Brotherhood chapter is for sure. Um, I think, you know, uh, funnily enough, the the where we shot about Brotherhood, where the blocks, the apartment blocks are, is actually I lived there for two years, not in the same apartment blocks, but just down the road. Um, so I used to actually visit those apartment blocks and pretty much every day and play sports there and soccer and football and stuff like that. Um, and I, I I used it in my pitch when I was writing the story, saying like, oh, we should shoot there because it would be cool. And I took some photos, and then we actually ended up the locations actually ended up getting the, the place and so it was a very special moment on that day when we were there and I was shooting in those blocks because it was really like a 360 degree thing that my life had come back full circle you know um so I think yeah it's so those bits of the film are really special um but yes brotherhood is very indicative of my upbringing in western Sydney um not 100% but it's definitely fabricated but you know the, the characters are based on people I grew up with and myself, a younger version of myself. 
And the way that all of those stories interlace, I, I, I think that's extraordinary. It's, it's an, a real feat um, that the writers um, have achieved and the directors and the DO, <coughs> excuse me, DOP, yeah. Tanya Lambert, to make all of these, because it's an anthology film with eight chapters and the way they interlace, uh, is I, I don't quite know how it happened, but it's, yeah, it's it's it is it's it's groundbreaking. It's groundbreaking. I can feel that was the trickiest part of the entire project. <laughs> you know, it, it was it was a real puzzle, um, and I think with an anthology, it does become like that. It becomes a bit of a puzzle, and I think you know it's kind of like the produce credit to the producers who have to solve the puzzle at the end of the day, and we can just sort of do our bits, but they have to really put it together. And I think then you have to shoot it and make it work. <laughs> and so I think it's 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 a very monumental task making an anthology feature film um so yeah i just i'm glad we you know got it done that's the main thing no you put this puzzle really well together i was engaged in the film throughout but would you call this kind of filmmaking as a new wave of australian storytelling um i think anthology. I yeah i think anthology films have been done before of course but definitely in terms of storytelling um i think this is a progressive modern australian film um unlike any other and mm -hmm. i think it's not just because of the multi languages um or the you know types of actors we're seeing on our screens on this film or you know the types of stories that have been told those are definitely the more avant-garde but um a special thing about this film is that all the writers were given um, like a lot of creative control. You know, we were giving we were given associate producer credits. So basically, what that meant was that we could have a creative say right from the script to now while the film's being marketed um, and coming out to the cinemas. So that never happens. I mean, it's very very rare, and it actually gives the power to the creatives. You know, to the to the writers. Whereas like with this film, it's been like let's all collaborate and make sure that the right images and the right visions getting out there. So I think that's why this film is actually progressive. Yeah, and I think that, that in terms of new ways or avant-garde is exactly what Arka was saying. It's generally filmmaking is very much top down. And this was a really bottom up process. And I think the process in itself is, 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 is new and it's really messy. Um, and it's really worth diving into that mess because look what can happen. And it's, I think it, it's an uncomfortable space and, and, and that's where all new work and new ways of, of getting something, you know, happening. Talking about culture, you both have been very vocal in representing the South Asian community in Australian films and television. So how far do you think we've reached that mission? Leah, you, you take this one. I would say we're in the last few years, um, we're actually getting somewhere. Um, because of pro, pro, uh, film projects like this and initiatives now that are embracing but also nurturing voices that aren't from the white culture mainstream. So we are given space now. I think we had, we still have to fight, but I think the, there's now an interest and a curiosity that, and a foundation of uh, support and initiatives and funding and that that are allowing these stories to actually come to the come to our screens so i think it's exciting now there's way more opportunities inclusivity is a good one um i i, I try to say that instead of diverse but i think i think like it's not about the film industry becoming diverse anymore like i think that was a thing maybe 10 years ago you know of like oh okay you know we need more diversity but it's like it's not about just like uh it's not about just like putting you know it, like putting too much it's, it's like putting too much seasoning or flavor in your food and it's not about that like you have to still make it taste good and it has to has to feel right you know and I think what's been really special in the last five to seven years maybe in the industry is that a lot of people from different backgrounds of you know that live in Australia and that are creative artists in Australia and filmmakers from crew to actors to writers to producers are coming up and they're actually wanting to tell their own stories. They're actually getting experience from working on other projects. And what happens is you actually build and nurture this really robust industry. Um, it's kind of like what's been happening in the UK for a long time um, and in certain parts of Europe and in, and, the, and in the US, but the US things happen really quickly. Whereas here, I think it's just much slower, um, <clears throat> but it's not about just 
Indian or South Asian artists making just South Asian projects. You know, I think like we should be able to make all types of projects, all facets of different genres. And, you know, I'm, I, I don't have to always write stories that have Bengali in it. Like I, I would love to make a science fiction film about aliens or something, you know, like I think it's about being given the power to do what you want to do. And I think like representing your community sometimes and sometimes not having to represent your community, sometimes just representing your brain and your ideas and your perspectives on life. So I think once we get to that point, um, I would feel like that the wheels are really sort of rolling. Um, but I can say that to back Leah for sure is that definitely the initiatives and the industry funding that's changing the models of funding and, and all of that stuff has been happening in the last five to 10 years, um, especially in the last five years. Um, and casting processes has definitely changed 100%. I can say that. And I know a lot of the big casting directors in Australia will are trying to champion inclusive casting and they're trying to look at not just the old way of casting, which is like, you know, you used to think basically if you see a role in a film and it's called Jim and he's the main guy, you'd think straight away, you'd think a white guy, you know? And I think that's changed now. It's like anybody can actually play this role. It's just about sort of seeing who's out there, you know? Um, so uh, there's a lot to say on this, I think, but- um, There's a lot, because there is yeah. that, expect exactly what you were saying, Aka, that when, you, when you're given a role or uh, you're, you're a creative writing a project or whatever it may be, there's an expectation that you bring elements of your culture into that, um, that um, it, it may just go in subconsciously anyway, but there's, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, you don't have to have, yeah, Diwali in or or yeah. you know <laughs> in a, in a, in every episode or whatever or you know some kind of yeah, that's right. It's not always going to be about that, um, but I think we can trust that yeah. our experience will seep into the writing and and it's yeah. really and like for me it's actually about just being able to see different perspectives on how we relate or react to certain events in life, birth, death, marriage. You know, every culture has yeah, a different I'll just, I'll just, to that. Uh, and bringing that back to like here out west, I think it's a really good example because, you know, there's nothing in here out west that's like a Diwali episode or like, you know, there's a some sort of Arab, you know, Lebanese celebration or like some Philip. It's just about these people's lives, you know. And I think, and I think, because people just for most of the year, every year of their life, they just live a normal life, you know. Like there's only these events that just happen sometimes. So it's kind of like we need to be able to in, in Australia we need to be able to start watching and appreciating um characters from like different backgrounds and different cultures existing rather than just like having to prove something or do something all the time like I think it's just interesting enough to have these characters these interesting characters exist you know and coexist with each other and it doesn't always have to have a, a Caucasian character in the cent center of it like I think that's the special thing with here out west there is no sort of white character that's like the middle of the film I mean there is the grandmother who starts off the film but I think that it's not about her really um it's about you know a bigger bigger sort of world um and I think once we get to that point I think the Australian film industry will be better for it because we'll have more robust cinema more robust tv you know tv and we'll be able to compete with global projects that and I think we're slowly starting to get there Thank you so much, Arka and Leah, for your time today, and all the best for the release of Here Out West in cinemas on 3rd of February. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, I'll just put a message out there, if you don't mind, to all the South Go Asian, you know, readers of this um, this article or um, this, you know, bit of media that, like, if you know, uh, I think it would be really special if all the South Asian community came out and watched this film. Like, I think you know, I would implore them to go watch this film because I think. It, they will get so much more than what they think that they're going to see um, and they will be able to relate in so many ways to the film um, and I think that's um, yeah like you know I know my mom and dad are taking their friends and a lot of people's friends and families are going but I would really really implore the South Asian communities to go and champion this film and watch it in the cinemas. Absolutely yeah yeah ditto that and and take like take families and friends and make an event of it you know. That's yes. right. Yeah have yeah, have a night out and support as well. I think that's something we're really good at doing. <laughs> support Absolutely. Your... No, we're 100% there to support this amazing film. Thank mm -hmm. you so much once again and all the best for Here Out West.